city in every city and then we take the gospel to them tracts are there to be distributed messages are there to be distributed and then your mouth is there to declare the words of the lord and tell the people how you have been born again how the change and the transformation has taken place in your life and how the change and the transformation can take place in their life as well not only that there were people from Thessalonica who are traveling out themselves some of them businessmen some of them traders some of them going to visit their relatives outside in Achaia in Macedonia and everywhere and they carried the gospel with them that's why it says in that verse 8 not only in Macedonia and Achaia that your faith is spread God word and in every place your faith is now being proclaimed their proclamation of the gospel was like a long sustained constant sound of a trumpet echoing into a wider and wider territory and communities of people their impact was clear our impact in this nation in this continent will be clear their impact was sustained our impact in this nation our impact in this continent our impact in the world everywhere you find deep alive bible church members our impact will be sustained in jesus name people will know us for the gospel they will know us for the glory of the gospel the grace of the gospel they will know us for the godliness the righteousness the holiness of the gospel everywhere in this nation everywhere in this continent everywhere beyond this continent our impact will be extensive in jesus name not, not only the Tesla believers that their faith was spread everywhere look at romans chapter one romans chapter one i'm reading from verse eight first i thank my god through jesus christ for you all for you all i pray there will be no exception I said there will be no exception that those who are sinful before today, they'll become saintly. Those who are childish before today, they become totally changed. And those who are just looking down at the non-essentials of life, and their lives have been kind of occupied, taken up by non-essentials. I pray today, every one of us will look up in Jesus' name. Essential things important things eternal things and things that will be rewarded in heaven will take our attention from today in jesus name these believers and in rome it says that paul the apostle was thanking thanking god for all of them that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world obviously they became different obviously they became totally distinguished obviously their lives declared the gospel and everywhere throughout the world they said they're different they're not like other churches they're not like other religious people they're not like other religious communities this was have the transforming power of the gospel in their lives that's what will be said of you i said that's what will be said of you that you are not just a church goer you are not just a part of a nominal church a dead church a defiled church a sinful church you are part of a transformed church a part of a transparent church and part of a triumphant church and the grace of god will be revealed in your life in jesus name in chapter 10 of romans chapter 10 of romans verse 14 chapter 10 of romans verse 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be said as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things but have they not all they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says Lord who has believed the report so then faith cometh by hearing 
I'm hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Have they not heard? Have they not heard? Yes, verily, certainly, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto all the ends of the world. Yes, verily. Yes, verily. I just want to remind you that they did have the city-wide great massive crusades everywhere, but the people were sharing the gospel everywhere. Individuals in the church were taking the gospel everywhere they went. And that by, by that personal contact, personal communication of the gospel, personal sharing of the gospel, that's how everybody heard. And now the sound of the gospel and the sound of the transforming power of that word went everywhere. And their words unto the ends of the world. Chapter 16. Chapter 16 of Romans. We're looking at it in verse 19. 16, 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Your obedience is come abroad unto all men. The Thessalonian believers had that same experience. They didn't just say, I believe. I believe. I believe. Their believing produced obedience. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. They are being children of God produced obedience. I know the Lord. Their knowledge of the Lord produced obedience. I'm serving the Lord. The service of the Lord produces obedience. If there's anything by which Christians are known, saved people are known, children of God are known, it is by obedience to the word of God. Where is grace if there's no obedience? Where is salvation if there's no obedience? Where is the hope of heaven if there is no obedience? And where is conversion if there is no obedience? For these believers, what made their faith public? What made their faith practical? What made their faith visible? What made their faith noticeable? Was the obedience. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. But yet, I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning that which is evil. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. What were they doing? What were they doing? Preaching the word. They were not gossiping, preaching the word. Now spreading stories. Stories about people. Stories about families. Stories about members of the church. Stories about the apostles and the prophets and the teachers, the evangelists and the pastors in the church. Not going about, they were not going about whispering, tail bearing. They were going about and there was only one thing they could do. And it was spreading the gospel. Preaching the word. The young did it. The old did it. The adults did it. And the youths did it. The men did it. And the women did it. By the way, it was persecution that drove them away from Jerusalem. They were not talking about their persecution. They were not nursing their wounds. They are talking about their pain, about their problems, about the pressures of the world on them. They just throw all that away. They were not complaining about anything. They were just spreading the gospel. That's the reason why the Lord has called us. If there's anything to do, it is to spread the gospel. Have you notice how short a time you spend in the church? 
Monday Bible study, maybe two, three hours. Sunday worship, maybe two, three hours. And then you have the Thursday revival hour, maybe two, three hours. At the largest exchange, maybe three hours. Three times a week, that's only nine hours. And then maybe you are a worker. And then you go to the workers' meeting Tuesday, maybe another three hours. Then on Saturday, maybe another three hours, making five times. Three times five. What's that? Tell me out loud. Fifteen. There are 168 hours in the week. And we spend just about 15 hours in the church. Even if you make it 18. Just to be on the larger side. 168 minus 18 is 150 hours still remaining. And if everything you do, I'm a worker, I'm a leader, only 18 hours at the most in the church. All the rest of the week, the 150 hours. That's why the world was one at that time. And he said, they that have turned the world upside down. They have come hither also. All those extra hours, big hours, long time, extensive time. They went everywhere preaching the word. They were not satisfied with only what they did. In the few hours they spent in the church. I pray that God will show us that revelation. Like that early church did. And then we see we have a lot to do. And we spend more time in the world. We then make the gospel reach out to those people in the world in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Both to the wise and to the unwise. Yeah, it's saying... That the commitment of the believer ought to be to everyone. The wise, barbarians, the unwise, the Greeks, that delighted in wisdom. And it's a same person that's saying, I'm a debtor. Number one, to the Greeks. The same person, number two, to the barbarians. The same person, number three, to the wise. Same person number four to the wise. There are some people that like to specialize. We're only for wise people. Well, if you're only for the wise people, that minority, because the majority of the world they are uneducated, unwise, barbarians, they know next to nothing. Am I committed to everyone? Other people say I'm only kind of committed to the barbarians. To those who are illiterate, what well, about those who are wise? They are the decision makers in the land. They are the people that rule. They are the people that steer any nation, every nation. Therefore, you cannot just sectionalize everything and say, I'm only for this, I'm only for that. The same Paul, the apostle, and the same believer, the same child of God, the same Thessalonians. They said, We go everywhere and we reach everyone. To the Greeks, to the barbarians, to the wise, to the wise. So that, in verse 15, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are true also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Only to those who believe, when you hear the gospel, you receive it in your heart, you receive it in your mind, you receive it to a faith, then it works effectually in you. When you present it convincingly, when you present it courageously, when you present it to bring up faith in the hearts of the people, it is that faith that they have as they receive that word. That is preached convincingly, courageously, and preached with conviction is a faith in them, believing that word 
That's what brings the change and the transformation. That's how the believers in, in this place, Thessalonica, that's how they receive the word. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It made a mighty change in every one of them. And it's still the same today. The gospel, the word, and not, has not lost its power. Still doing the mighty work of transformation today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is what? A new creature. He was disobedient before. Now he's obedient. A new creature. Was sinful before. Now he's saintly. A new creature. He was defiled before. Now he's cleansed. Now he's different. A new creature. An adulterer before. Now he's straightforward, honest, pure, clean person. A new creature he was addicted to evil, idolatry, immorality before. Now he's different. He's now addicted and committed unto the Lord, unto righteousness. A new creature was unrighteous before. Everybody knew him to be notorious. But now, a new creature in the Lord. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Was a thief. He'll peel for your steel. Just look away. The very next moment, the property, the money is gone. He was a thief before. He's now an honest person working with his hand. The things that are good. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation that's given to the whole church. Give it to the old church. Everyone that has become a new creature in Christ. It says he has given us this ministry. That will be having the ministry of reconciliation to we. That is to say that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. And not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Ministry of reconciliation in verse 18. Word of reconciliation in verse 19. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, we plead with you. In Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. Be ye reconciled unto God and is the whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world in Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 Revelation chapter 22 and we're looking at verse 17 and the spirit and the bride say come the bride of Christ the people of God the whole church the young and the old the men and the women, the high and the lowly, the educated and the illiterates, the adults and the youth, everyone, bride of Christ and the spirit and the bride say, come and they say it in the day and they say it in the evening. They say it in the marketplace. They say it in their communities. They say it in the schools. They say it in the colleges. They say it on the bus. They say it on the train. They say it everywhere. The bride, the spirit and the bride say, Come, come to the light. Come to Christ. Come into the kingdom. And they say it 
quietly, one on one. They say it publicly in crusades. They say it in the village. They say it in the city. They say it in the town. They say it everywhere in the country. They say it everywhere in the continent. The spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say come. And let him that is the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. Point number two. Exemplary separation from a sinful community. Exemplary separation from a sinful community. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you. And now ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. They made a turning around. They were devoted to dumb dead idols that they called gods before. And they now knew that if you follow dead idols, your life will be dead, your soul dead, your spirit dead, everything about you dead. If you want to come alive, you turn away from the dead idols. Come out of darkness and you come to the living and the true God. How you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And when they did, they showed the evidence of that. Turn in, turn in, turn in. Acts chapter 14. Verse 15, turn. That's the evidence of repentance. Turn. That's the evidence of conversion. Turn. That's the evidence of salvation. Turn. That is, you are not facing the direction you are facing before. You are facing the direction of hell. Of indignation. Of eternal judgment. Turn. Now you face the direction of heaven, the direction of light, the direction of glory. Turn. That's the word. Acts chapter 14, verse 15. And say, sirs, what do ye this says? Look at what you do. And the spirit of the Lord is saying, why do ye this says? What's the purpose? What's the effect? What's the outcome? What's the destiny? Why do these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that it should turn. And preach unto you that it should turn. And preach unto you that it should turn. What's the difference between a dead church and a living church? A dead church has not turned. A living church has turned. What's the difference between a dead man and a living man? A dead man cannot turn. A living man has turned. What's the difference between somebody that has not the life of Christ. And the one that lasts the life of Christ. The 